Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meg Method podcast, the coaching podcast dedicated to helping you move, think and feel better for life. If you've been following along, you know my esteemed co-host, Mr. David Yim and I have delved into the world's six major marathons. However, what many of you may not realize is that I've completed a total of 20 marathons thus far with Tokyo this March marking my 21st. My marathons so far have ranged from official to off the beaten path adventures and recently I've received numerous inquiries about covering my non-major marathons and as someone deeply indebted to the running community I couldn't resist the opportunity to share insights and tips from my experiences. So my hope is that by sharing I can ignite your enthusiasm for your own journey and perhaps make it a tad smoother too. So today I'm excited to share my experience with the Rome Marathon, which is coming up for 2024 next month. And among the 20 marathons I've completed, I think Rome stands out as one of my all-time favorites. It had an abundance of tourist attractions along the course It's got that iconic start and finish line at the Colosseum and Italy's culinary delights make it the perfect place for carb loading. And the race itself felt like real life Mario Kart and I will reveal why in the episode. I'll also delve into the race details and I will share some cherished memories from my 2018 run. Um, I made this race an excuse to turn it into a girl's city break with my best friends. And I'm so glad I did because I can't help but smile whenever I think about it. Uh, It was our first time in Italy and we absolutely fell in love with the country and I can't wait to go back. An important note, while I'm not affiliated with the Rome Marathon or any mentioned businesses, I hope this episode serves as both informative and anecdotal for those running this year or considering it in the future. So let's get to it with some overall race details. Edition 29 of the race is set for Sunday, March 17th, 2024. It will be starting at 8.30 a.m. and hopefully with average temperatures around 13 degrees Celsius, which is typical for the end of March, and around nine degrees at the start. So on paper, it is ideal running weather, but what the weather will turn out to be in reality on the day, who knows? I seem to attract heat waves at whichever marathon I run at. It's either a skill or a curse of mine. I can't work out which yet. Um, I think I've run more heat wave marathons than I run any other type of weather, um, including New York in November 2022, which is very impressive because you're usually running in hats and gloves. Um, But I ran Rome early April 2018, and I can tell you now it was a very hot day. So I've kept that heat wave streak alive. But let's hope you get some ideal running weather on your big day. Approximately 11,000 runners participate with a time limit of six hours and 30 minutes. So this translates to an average pace of 15.52 minutes per mile or 9.14 minutes per kilometer. The course is mostly flat, which is good for speed. However, it does include cobblestone sections at the start and end, which can potentially affect the re- at your pace, um, especially in wet conditions. Now, signing up for the Rome Marathon is easier than ordering a margarita pizza in comparison to the major marathons with registration open until race capacity is reached or shortly before the event. So, for example, you can still sign up this year until the 11th of March, which is only six days before the race. However, for Rome, it really does pay to be an early bird as the earlier the registration, the cheaper the entries with prices ranging from 79 euros to 99 euros this year if you're at that later end, which I still think is quite reasonable, to be honest, for uh, in comparison to a lot of the bigger city races. And you, with that price, you may even have some money left in your pocket for some Italian gelato and it's worth it, let me tell you that. Um, there is 
is also a relay or a charity place entry option, along with a five kilometer fun run for young ones and family members. Participants must be 20 years or older for Rome, and you need to provide a run card number and a medical certificate to complete your entry, which includes purchasing a run card for 30 euros or 50 euros if part of a sports promotion authority. And this is mandatory insurance coverage. If you're a Fidel n- m- member, you can use your Fidel license instead. To buy the run card, you just go to www.runcard.com and then you receive a card digitally by mail. And I actually found this quite daunting at first when I was running in 2018. I had no idea what these two things were. Um, I never had to do that for a race before. But as I said, the run card process is quite simple and explained and obtaining the medical certificate was actually relatively simple. It just involved downloading a provided template, um, getting it completed by a GP. I think I left it with my doctor's office for like two days, I paid a small fee, and then I just uploaded it to the data health platform as requested. And they gave instructions for that in the entry details. Um, please remember these procedures are not intended to stress you out. It can be stressful at the start and it can be a little frustrating if you hadn't had to do it before. But at the end of the day, they do just want what's best for the runners and they want you to be safe and have a healthy race. So it's think of the bigger picture. Um, it's not that difficult to do and it's all for your own better enjoyment on the day. Before the race, expect to receive three emails about five days prior. These include a confirmation letter and a waiver to print a sign, along with instructions and race date information. These documents are necessary for when you go to collect your big packet at the Expo Village, and that is located this year at Palazzo di Congressi in Piazza John Kennedy. It is a little ways out of the city, but it's accessible via public transport, you would have Earth Fermi, which is Blue Line B, being the recommended stop. And then it's just a short 10 minute walk to the expo. The Rome Expo only operates on Friday, the 15th of March and Saturday, the 16th of March this year. And race packets cannot be collected on the day of the event. Again, very typical for marathons, another 101 there. For Rome, though, you can nominate someone to collect your race packet for you, uh, but they'll need to bring a signed permission letter from yourself and a copy of your race confirmation and photo ID. At the Palazzo Expo, there's food trucks outside um, and there will be entry queues that are assigned by the assigned, that are organized by the assigned number you were given during signed up. Um, If this gets confusing, there's lots of friendly staff to assist with any questions. And once you're inside, you just present your form at the pickup counter. They then give you your race packet and you'll be directed to collect your free shirt and bag. I will say um, that the setup of the expo can be a little bit frustrating because they kind of force you through this one-way system that conveniently snakes you past promotional stands and other race adverts, which is smart from a business point of view, I guess, but it can be frustrating not to be able to just freely roam, excuse the pun, um, around the expo like you do in other races. Um, However, what I will say is the energy of the room was still high. They do provide opportunities for fun activities and photos en route. I even got to have a photo with my bid number and a Roman. Um, So all was well. And additionally, on the way out, you can personalize your race top for five euros, which again, I think is a nice touch. Once you're back outside, you've got access to those food trucks again. Um, There was lots of music on offer uh, for some post-pickup relaxation. Or like me, you can rush back to the city centre to get started early on that carb loading because there is no better place for carb loading than Italy, in my opinion. The official technical clothing sponsor for the race is Joma Sport, which is a Spanish brand. And this year's shirt features a very nice Colosseum theme. It's arguably, I think, one of the sexiest finishers shirts I've seen. So you are in for a treat if you're running this year. I'm a bit envious because my 2018 shirt was 
definitely not sexy. The sponsor then was New Balance, um, but my shirt was an aluminous orange colour. Like you wouldn't have missed me. It was definitely not a top for day running. Um, but to be fair, it has come very useful in night runs because you can see me coming, I think, 26.2 miles off. <laughs> um, and they were also very generous in 2018 as they provided a free New Balance backpack as well, which I still use now. Um, one thing to note is I found Italian sizes to be a little bit smaller than I was used to. I don't know whether that's the case with the new sponsor, but it might be worth, if you're not sure about your size, doing a little research or messaging the organizers just to avoid disappointment on the day. Um, in addition to all of this as well, uh, remember you can download the Run Rome the Marathon app and that can be used for live tracking and ranking on the race day. But again, the app will likely not work until the morning of the race. So just something to remember. It's not broken. It, they just usually don't start till that morning. Other pre-race activities to consider include the Mass of the Marathon Runner, which takes place on Saturday, March 16th at 6 p.m. at the Church of Artists in Piazza del Popolo. This event offers a special blessing for athletes and includes a prayer for peace through sporting experience. A very important note, it is all in Italian, but even if you can't understand a word of it, it does still provide a beautiful experience regardless of their language barriers. Additionally, marathon runners typically receive free access to several museums in Rome a few days before and the day after the race. So it's advisable to check any correspondence to confirm this arrangement, but usually presenting your race bib or confirmation letter grants free entry during this period. So just check that runner's guidebook when it comes out. Moving on to the race itself, um, the Rhone Marathon offers a truly unique experience with over 30 tourist attractions along the course. The whole thing just felt surreal, to be honest. It was like being in a movie um, and, yeah, just a real journey through history. So the start and the finish is at the iconic Colosseum and Imperial Forum. I would suggest it might be worth looking for places to stay around that area or near a metro station so you can get there easy easier um, to the start on race day you would just take line b to circus maximus which is only a short walk away and please note that the coliseum stop is usually closed the day before the race the subways usually open up at 5 30 a.m on race day to give you plenty of time to get to the start just make sure you account for some busy metro stations en route i personally decided to walk the 30-ish minutes from my Airbnb. My friends thought that was unnecessary, <laughs> but I actually loved the walk and I found it completely stress-free. And I also felt like the Pied Piper of running as every road I got closer to the start, more runners just seemed to appear out of nowhere and join me. So that all added to the race experience. This year's race started at 8.30 a.m., which is quite early compared to some races. And the baggage, baggage drop typically stops about an hour before the start. So double check that in the runner's guidebook for this year. Um, belongings not needed during the race are placed in the clear bag that's provided at packet, packet pickup. And they need to be dropped off within the designated start area, which will again be indicated on your bib. I personally found the process to be really well organized, not at all stressful, which is what you want on marathon day. And I particularly appreciated the added convenience of retrieving your bag from the same location at the finish. Um, while there are plenty of toilets near the start area, those further along tend to be less congested. So that is a marathon 101 <laughs> for any first time marathon runners out there. The race features staggered starts with three waves of departures spaced a few minutes apart. Participants or athletes, as the marathon calls you, are assigned a starting grid area. So this is a corral, basically, um, and that is indicated by a coloured grid based on your bib number, which will also include your name if you sign up before the 4th of March, which I think is actually a lovely touch as a lot of the crowd would cheer your name in support when they see it on your bib. Your bib number is based on your registration time. However, your starting grid color, your corral, 
is determined by the expected finish time you provided on your application form. The meeting time and access to the starting grids will be communicated in the race info, which is published before the race and latecomers start at the back. Volunteers will check your bib to ensure entry to the correct starting sector. So don't worry if you're confused about that, they'll help you out. And once in, you are in your grid, you cannot leave. You are officially locked in for the marathon. Um, so make sure you prepare water before you go in there because there's no fountains there. Um, and also there will be more toilets though. But again, please double check this as I do not want to be responsible for any spoiled pants on the day. Your race chip is attached to your bib, um, which I find to be a lot more convenient than attaching it to your shoe. Berlin Marathon, take note. And athletes get given three sets of time post-race. So you get your official starting gun to finish line time. You get a net time from when your bib crossed the start line to the finish time. So don't worry um, if it's slow to cross the start line that won't work against you you will get that time from crossing to the end and you will also get intermediate times at various kilometers along the course so essentially your splits and the distance markers that will be posted around the race are provided in kilometers so that might be good to know um, if you're pacing yourself on your smartwatch the Rome start line where to begin it it has to hold the top spot for my favorite start line across all the marathons I've done so far. Even Berlin, um, the atmosphere was electric. You've got the Coliseum making the most epic backdrop for pre-race selfies. I, I think my jaw just kept hanging open. I couldn't believe it. Um, they had some really fun music playing. They had the Italian national anthem for that added bit of culture. I found the com camaraderie among runners to be excellent. Um, people were super friendly. I heard some really inspiring stories and the build up to the starting gun. I have like goosebumps. Just think about it. They had a flyover by the Italian air force and they spray the colors of the Italian flag overhead. Now I'm going to ruin it with English, with my English accent, but I will try. I believe they're called the Fatricolori. Um, they fly over the head and then they would announce a loud go through the tannoy. The gun goes off and then you start. So personally, I was blown away um, by the starting line efforts. I, I think marathon, uh, every other marathon should watch out and say, are you not entertained? And I absolutely was. So great job, Rome. Now it's time for the race itself what you've all been training for. You will have paces starting right alongside you on the day. So that should hopefully make any time goals easier. And oh my goodness, the paces at the Rome Marathon are literally on another level. I believe there was 175 in total last year from all over the world. Um, they're usually wearing bright colours with the time on the front and the back. And they also have a giant balloon that is floating above them. So they're pretty hard to miss. Um, Rome by far has the most paces I've ever seen in the race with the most energy. In 2018, there was about, I'm, I'm, I really think there was about six to 10 paces for every time marker. So they were like this party crew coming your way um, but in more recent years they've organized the paces in slightly smaller groups and in five minute intervals so it really is pacer heavy for this marathon and the whole point is that is they want them to help build that energy and make for a better racing experience um, and those big balloons you can see them coming from afar it's pretty hilarious because you look behind you and you just see this sea of balloons coming your way and all of a sudden it's like you've got a rocket booster up your back really like Mario Kart I told you and you're suddenly picking up the pace to get rid of them so real life Mario Kart the whole thing was very Italian um, I remember one part I was running down this long stretch of road and then I just hear all this commotion right and this guy just comes speeding past like a happy gazelle that's the only way I can describe him it's just the most epic spring in his step and he must have been well known in the running community because 
all the paces just started going crazy. They were like hollering and cheering, ciao, Mario. And I'm not making that up, I swear. His name was Mario. Um, and no word of a lie, a woman just opens up her balcony and starts blowing kisses to him. So it was very odd and very passionate and very entertaining to watch. So you will be entertained on the <laughs> Rome course for sure. The current marathon route is mostly flat with about 26 meters of elevation. So not much. Um, and there is six kilometers of cobblestones, which I will be honest, that is the more challenging part of the race, especially if the cobblestones get wet and when you are on tired legs at the end. Now, now is the time I will tell you why I think Rome Marathon is like real life Mario Kart, even more than Tokyo. So first of all, you are literally surrounded by Italian brothers. <laughs> And I'm sure there will be some plumbers in the mix there somewhere. We even had in 2018 a number of Mario and Luigi's running in costumes, much to my delight and the delight of other runners. And the cobblestones are also like the obstacles that you get in the Mario Kart video game that are like trying to get you sliding off the course. And they give sponges out during the race to try cool you down. So you can imagine how much more slippery these cobblestones get when they get wet. To add to this, they give out fruit at the refreshment stations. So you are literally trying to weave through banana skins <laughs> and orange peels dropped on the ground um, from the runners that came before you. So it is real life Mario Kart. Um, and this is happening in its thousands as well, right? There's 11,000 people in the race. So every aid station you just do have to have a little bit of caution. However, what I will say is those orange slices were probably the best orange slices I've had in my life. So arguably, maybe worth slipping for. Um, and overall, I would just say, be aware, have some caution coming into the cobbles, but don't worry about it too much. Because despite potential slowdowns um, caused by navigating cobblestones and age stations, the race really was enjoyable. Um, one thing I also found difficult though was uh, it was a hot one for me. There wasn't much shade on the course however every two to three kilometers there were refreshment stations and they provided water mineral salts and solid foods which I really appreciated the frequency of those um, they don't usually give out gels though for this marathon so bring your own unless they stay otherwise and additionally they did have the sponge stations I mentioned and aid stations they're available along the course as well although finishers do not get a sponge in their goodie bag at the end so I was gutted about that but I don't know you might be sick of seeing sponges by the end of this race um, there was sufficient medical stations on route two uh, the marathon course this marathon course has a lot of turns I, pr I think maybe the most turns I've ever seen in the race some are quite sharp turns as well so what I will say from a coaching point of view if you're going for a good time or you want to avoid going over a marathon distance it might be worth having a strategic plan coming up to those turns to help you better navigate them more efficiently and maintain a good pace the first part of the race and the end of the race was very heavy uh, with tourist attractions which was amazing to see I was constantly like oh, can't believe it um, and there was lots sprinkled throughout as well um, I believe they state that there is over 30 en route which literally makes it one of the most tourist attraction heavy races in the world so that's quite cool um, <laughs> to, to be able to say to people I've done the most tourist attraction marathon in the world and I remember the hairs standing up on my arm as we got closer to the Vatican running along that closed road the Pope was outside giving a speech and he was being projected on the big screens um and yeah I couldn't believe it is and it's never lost to me how lucky we are as runners to not only run in these amazing cities but to go have these closed roads um and get to experience these attractions in a way that most people don't used to get 
get used to. So that was a very cool moment. I even recorded a little bit of that on my phone. And if you follow me at the Meg Method on Instagram, I will create a story highlight on my page so you can see some of the pictures and the videos that I took that day if you want to have a little look at what that experience was like. Um, Despite not reaching major marathon crowd levels, I mean, it is a very different capacity size than them. Um, I found that the spectators, especially in the city centre, were really vocal and supportive when they were there. Um, There was lots of different languages, broken English, um, and they were really good at calling out runners' names on their bibs and charity vests. However, um, the crowd support did drop a bit in the quieter sections of the course. Um, That can be quite challenging if you're someone who fries off the cheers. However, what I would say was the camaraderie among the runners stayed strong from the start line throughout. I had some lovely chats en route, um, got to find out people's reasons for running, what other marathons they'd done, how many they'd done. Um, and this was aided by the very enthusiastic paces. So I didn't notice um, the energy drop too much, but it can be a little bit more difficult in some areas if you are used to crowds. And I'd say the quieter points were around maybe mid uh, to 20 kilometers. I was also very lucky because for the marathon, my best girlfriends turned it into a girl's trip and they decided to come with me. And in addition to that, my uh, to my surprise, my parents actually appeared early on in the race and it turns out they had flown over to support me too. Although I expect um, they were more enticed by the Italian food and the heat wave than actually watching me Um, sweat around Rome. Um, And this actually became evident because during the last half of the race, I encountered a older gentleman really struggling. I think he was getting the beginnings of heat wave. So I decided to accompany him. And when I called my mum to inform her, I didn't want her to worry and see me slow down on the tracking app. Uh, She casually mentioned they were out for lunch with my friends and they weren't even checking the tracker. So Meggy no mates apparently and feeling slightly abandoned, going up an cl- incline in the middle of nowhere in the boiling heat, dragging this old chap with me. I realised that Rome Marathon is even funner for the spectators <laughs> and I, I think they actually carb loaded more than I did for this race, which weirdly wasn't the bit that I needed help with. But hopefully that's reassuring that if you've got people coming up to watch, they can have an amazing time in Rome too. And on a serious note, um, helping this guy get to his family near the finish line was a really great memory for me and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Towards the end of the race, the last kilometres wind through the Baroque old town. The cobblestones here definitely demand extra focus on tired legs. However, with that beautiful Colosseum appearing again and having that finish line in sight, the crowds get louder and they really do provide you with that final bit of energy. Once you cross the finish line, you'll receive a well-deserved medal. My 2018 medal was an absolute beauty. This year's is Colosseum themed, uh, like the race shirt. You also get a congratulatory text with your overall time when you cross the line. I also got that in the LA and Toronto marathons, and I think it's a really nice gesture. And then the official results are later posted on the uh, marathon website. Additionally, there are first aid stations goodie bags with water, whole foods and mineral salts, a massage surface area, bathrooms and change rooms also available at the finish. And you might even find some Romans like I did um, around for a photo opportunity at the end. And that still remains one of my favorite finisher photos ever. And I'll also put that on the Meg Method Instagram and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, You collect your bag on the way out. Don't forget that. That will have all your belongings in. I met my friends and parents outside the front of the Coliseum. However, 
in hindsight, it was pretty chaotic and it did take them a long time to get to me. So it might be easier choosing a location a little further away from the finish line just for convenience. And whatever you do, just communicate well and then go live your best life in the land of pasta, pizza and gelato. Enjoy it. Enjoy the race festivities. Um, I went for a meal with my loved ones post-race, but I think typically around 6 p.m. there's usually a marathon an after party at various venues um, and that will be specified in the marathon correspondence sent a few days before the race Um, like I said I didn't go but I heard great reviews whatever you do enjoy and carry on that carb loading Um, some travel tips for Rome sightseeing is a must there is so many breathtaking sites and rich history that are truly worth exploring Even casual strolls often led me to stumbling upon some ancient ruins just casually tucked away in a back street. Bus tours can be a great idea if you have tired legs the day after the marathon, although I personally find it better to walk and stretch my legs out. I find I have less symptoms. Um, They go quicker. Um, And lions can be long at popular tourist spots, um, but they do usually move quickly. Um, You could also consider visiting attractions during off-peak hours to avoid the crowds. Um, I would definitely advise to book the Vatican tickets in advance just to make sure you get in entry and it avoids disappointment. The girls and I actually booked a tour for the Vatican and our guide was incredible. I don't normally do tours, but I'm so glad we did. And it was crazy the difference a day makes because the marathon, as I mentioned, was a heat wave, um, of course, because they follow me. But the next day was a complete rain fest. It was like the gods <laughs> had opened the sky. And I don't think I've actually ever been that wet to this day. Um, it poured all day, um, but despite a complete downpour, a broken umbrella, and I looked like I'd reversed wet myself because I was wearing light colored chinos and the rain had got into the bottom of them and traveled up my body. Um, The tour guide somehow managed to just keep the energy high the whole time and she was cracking jokes left, right and centre. So me and the girls absolutely loved her. Um, And I also think uh, as a group of tourists, we almost flooded the floor the ground floor of the Vatican with how wet we are so yeah book the Vatican in advance and if you can book a tour we thought it was totally worth it us girls stayed in an Airbnb while we were there there was five of us but it was perfect for what we needed Um, I'm not sure about the prices now but when we booked in 2018 it was cheap it was fit for purpose and our host was amazing she had great communication and she even actually helped pre-book a taxi uh, to and from the airport for us as well, which took a load of stress away. Um, And the location was great as we could easily stroll to and from the centre of the city. Now, the food, arguably more important than the marathon. I bet you've been like, come on, Meg, get get to the bit that we actually want. Um, You really can't go wrong with the food. So it's a quick one for me, really. Every place we went to uh, for food was incredible. Um, Italian food, it just blows my mind because it's actually so simple and has very few ingredients. There's no crazy toppings, but the ingredients are just so fresh right? They're they're just so well done, so high quality. So I am very excited for you and your carb loading. Enjoy. And as I say, like you've got these heavy pizzas and pastas, which that's a lot of carbs, right? They should be heavy, but they just somehow make them nice and light. So go and experience that magic for yourself. Like with any marathon, restaurants get really busy the night before, And then usually late lunch and evening on on the day of the marathon. So it's worth booking in advance if you want to eat at a certain place at a certain time. And that's another marathon 101 tip for you there as well. For all of my gluten free babes, I can eat gluten for a while, including in 2018. Um, I'd preferred myself for heartbreak and disappointment pre-travel as I was just convinced I was going to go out there 
and I wasn't going to be eating much and I was just going to be sitting there like a sad panda (laughs) while my friends enjoyed all that Italy had to offer. But I'm very happy to say that I was completely wrong. Even back in 2018, it was super easy to find at least one gluten-free dish on most of the menus. Most places did gluten-free pasta, if not pizza as well. Um, And I imagine that's got even easier six years down the line. Um, And I still worship my friend Julia to this day as she somehow managed to track down a restaurant for post-race celebrations that could make every dish on their menu also gluten-free and dairy free. So I was literally living my gluten free dream because not only was everyone else catered for, I also didn't feel left out and the food was incredible. It got five stars from all of us. Um, The restaurant was called Mama Eat and I checked before recording this and they are still open. So what I will do is I will put the link in the show notes for all those gluten-free babes. Even if you're not gluten-free, the food was incredible. So I think you'll love it. And a little fun fact, Rome has lots of public water fountains around the city that offer both still and sparkling water. Blue my mind. So enjoy that novelty while you're there. And overall, I found the city to be super welcoming. Me and the girls felt very safe at night. Um, And actually the night before we left for the airport, Roma FC had won a really big football match. If you've ever been to Italy before, you know they take their football very seriously and people were losing their minds celebrating. I think someone even tried to get in the Trevi Fountain They might have been successful before they very got quickly got yanked out. Um, But yeah, it was very fun seeing how passionate they were. And our driver, when he was driving us back to the airport, he he said, we said to him like, oh, how fun was it with the football last night? It was amazing to see. We can't, we can't believe the reaction. And he just turned to us very seriously. And he said, ladies, in Italy, we have free religions. We have football we have food and we have actual religion. (laughs) And I think that, I think he's right. I think that pretty much summed up our whole Roman experience. So there you go. That wraps up my Rome marathon experience along with um, hopefully some valuable insights for this year's runners. I am thrilled for you if you are participating. It remains one of my favorite races, even six years later. Um, And returning to Italy is on the top of my list. So perhaps I will tackle another marathon uh, in an Italian city next time. Or if you've got any suggestions for a city break that you think I should run, if you're passionate about a particular marathon that you want to recommend, pull it in the comments. If you have any race related questions, feel free to reach out. My contact details are in the show notes. And additionally, if you are gearing up for an endurance event and you need personalized coaching, you can visit my website, www.themegmethod.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more big city breakdowns in the future. Until next time, be kind, be well, be curious, race safe, big love.